in today's Thinkorswim tutorial, we'll be building a very simple Bollinger Bands trading strategy. In fact, this is probably the most popular Bollinger Bands trading strategy, in which you're looking for price to break outside of either the upper or lower Bollinger Bands, and then you're looking for a reversal. This is a reversion to the mean sort of trade. It's one of the most popular trading strategies, and you've probably heard a lot about it, especially when you've learned a little bit about Bollinger Bands. It's the first strategy most folks talk about. Let's take a look at an example to uh, visualize what the setup looks like. Here's a long side trade example. We're looking for price to break outside of the Bollinger Bands. In this case, this is the lower Bollinger Band that price is breaking outside of. That tells us we're outside of whatever standard deviation threshold you set. The default is a two standard deviation threshold, and that's what this band represents here. This blue line is the mean. That's just a very simple moving average. In this case, the default is set to a 20 SMA, so nothing too crazy there. Now what we're looking for, for this particular setup or this indicator, is we need the low to be outside of the Bollinger Bands for a long side setup, and we're then looking for the first green candle that looks like this, in which price is closing above the previous candle's high. Very simple Bollinger Bands and price action setup, but it's one that you've probably heard discussed many times before. When you do get that candle, you're looking for this candle to take you to the mean, aka a reversion to the mean sort of trade idea. The stop in this case is outside whichever candle's low you're using in which price closes above that previous candle's low. If we flip this and we take a look at a short side setup here, it's the same idea. Price is outside of the upper Bollinger Bands. We get that first candle which closes below that previous candle's low. And this is our reversal candle in which we're looking for that sell side signal to plot using this indicator we'll build. This is a very simple tutorial. In fact, there's only two uh, requirements that we're looking at. So even if you're new to ThinkScript coding or Thinkorswim, you should be able to follow along. Now let's define these requirements just so we have them crystal clear. Requirement number one, the previous candle to whatever our trigger candle is. The low of that candle must be outside of the lower Bollinger Bands for long side setups, and for short side setups, the high must be outside of the upper Bollinger Bands. So that's requirement number one, which we have met with this candle right here, this red candle. We have that requirement being met. The low is outside of the lower Bollinger Band. That's this purple line. Now requirement number two is the current candle's close must be greater than the previous candle's high. This is again for a long side setup. We take a look at candle number two here. We can see the closing price well above the previous candle's high. This is the reversal candle in which we would expect to see a buy side arrow forming underneath. So that's the basic gist of what we're looking to build. Hopefully these pictures help make it crystal clear in terms of the requirements we have. We can now translate these requirements to code and start diving into Thinkorswim to get started. So let's go ahead and do just that. Now coming inside of our Thinkorswim platform, before we write code, let me give you a brief demo of what we're going to build. So I have the study that we'll build together loaded on, but let me also load in our Bollinger Bands. These are the settings I currently have the Bollinger Band set to. It should be the default settings. The price is set to close, displace factor zero, our moving average length is 20, and that's a simple moving average. And then our two deviations are minus 2.0 and positive 2.0 for a plus or minus uh, two standard deviation uh, type of level for our bands. Now, if I click OK, we can now see the Bollinger Bands on our chart. We can see the moving average line in the middle, and we can also see our buy and sell arrows. So let's now zoom in to one particular moment here. We can start to take a look at what these arrows are telling us. Now we see a buy side arrow here because we had a low outside of our Bollinger Bands and we had a close above the previous candle's high. Same thing right here as well. Our low was outside of the Bollinger Bands. We had a close above the previous candle's high. So that's when we'll see the buy side arrows plot. If we take a look at the sell side arrows, same idea here as well. Price goes outside of our Bollinger Bands. We then get the close below the previous candle's low and you can see the bearish arrows that are plotting on our chart. So that's the basic gist of what we're looking to build in this particular tutorial. We're going to take the Bollinger Bands and turn them into something a little bit smarter, a little bit more useful. Now to get started, click the studies icon, and there, if you have no studies loaded on, 
go ahead and click create to start building your own indicator. Give this a name. I'll call mine TI underscore Bollinger Bands Reversal. And we can now come inside of our code, delete everything we have inside, and start building something from scratch. Now, if you think about it, the main component of this reversal indicator are the lower and the upper bands. So we can start by defining that first. So I'll say defining upper and lower Bollinger bands. And by defining these bands with their own variable names, it makes it a lot easier when we go through the code to reference them, to know we have the right lines, all of that good stuff. So let's start here by saying def lower band. And the lower band is going to be equal to the Bollinger bands function or the study. And specifically, we're referencing the lower band plot. The Bollinger Bands has a few different plots. In fact, if I show you that, I'll load back in Bollinger Bands here. If I double click the study, you can see the three different plots right down here. We have the midline, which is the average. We have the lower band and we have the upper band. So the upper band is uh, the upper and lower band, excuse me, are what we are concerned about right now. So we've defined the lower band. Now let's go ahead and define the upper band as well. Same idea here. So def upper band is equal to Bollinger Bands dot upper band. And now we can start by defining our conditions. Let's come back to our PowerPoint. And here we can see we have two different requirements. Let's start with requirement number one first, in which we're looking to check is our low or high outside of either the lower or the upper Bollinger Bands. I'll come back inside of thinkorswim, and here we can start by saying def condition one, and let's start by defining uh, if the low is below the lower Bollinger Band. So I'll say low on the previous candle is less than our lower band from the previous candle. So that's condition one. Condition two is for our uh, bearish scenario. So here we can say is our high on the previous candle greater than the upper band from the previous bar as well. So now we have requirement number one met, which is condition one for our long side uh, setup, condition two for our short side setup. Now we move on to condition three and condition four, in which we're looking at the closing price with the previous candle's low or high price. So there I can say for our bull side scenario, is our current candle's close greater than our previous candle's high? If so, then return true. And then for condition four, we can flip that for our short side setup saying, hey, is our close less than our previous candle's low? If yes, then go ahead and return true. Now, just with these uh, two, four, and six lines here, we have everything we need to start to create our triggers. Let me show you. So let's start by defining our bull signal first. Instead of def, here we say plot, since we'd like to see this as arrows on our chart. So I'll say plot bull signal is equal to condition one, which is our long side setup. So I'll say condition one and condition three, which is also part of our long side setup. So if we take a look at what this is saying, bull signal, meaning our bullish signal, will return true anytime condition one is true, which is looking to check if our low is below our uh, lower Bollinger Bands on the previous bar. And on the current bar, the closing price is greater than the previous candle's high. If that's true, this condition will turn true and it will plot an arrow on our chart. So we can say set painting strategy to see that arrow and we can set the strategy to Boolean arrow up. Now let's also give this a weight since we'd like to see these arrows a little bit bigger. So I'll say a weight of three. This weighting scale goes from one to five. So three is right in the middle. Now we can define our bear signal as well. So I'll say plot bear signal is equal to the other two conditions, so condition two and condition four. If both of those conditions are true, then we know our rules for a bear signal are met. We can say bear signal dot set painting strategy. And here, painting strategy dot boolean arrow down this time. And we can do the same thing with the weight where we set the weight equal to three, but we need to make sure this is applied to bear signal instead of bull signal. Now with that, if we click apply, let's see what we have on our charts. I have the indicator that we just coded loaded on Bollinger Bands reversal. You can see this is our indicator since there's no lock next to the scroll icon here. 
And I also have the default Bollinger Band study loaded on, just so we can test and make sure this indicator is working the way we would expect. I'll click Apply, OK, and let's take a look at what we have here. Now we have two buy side arrows here, so a low, then we have our close here, which is above the previous candle's high, so this should be a trigger. And same thing, we can see the second candle as well, in which price has already touched the actual mean that we're looking at. So maybe we can fix that to avoid, say, bars like this. I don't really care about bars like this, given that we've already gotten the reversion to the mean. The opportunity is over. Really, only this bar right here presented you with that opportunity. This bar right here, uh, to contrast a second example, would still give you the signal since we haven't yet hit that reversion to the mean. So hopefully that illustrates the difference between this bar right here, why we would want to, say, eliminate this, compared to this bar in which that reversion to the mean is still not hit. So to tweak the code, let's come back into our studies icon, the Bollinger Bands reversal. Here's all of our code. We can add in one more line here, which is our actual midline. So we'll say def mid Bollinger Bands, and instead of the upper band, this is going to be the midline. Now with the midline, we can add in one more condition here. So we'll say condition five for our long side setup in which we'd like to make sure that the high is not uh, greater than or equal to our midline or mid I should say if this is the case so if our high of the candle is greater than the mid then we know that this reversion to the mean has already taken place and we're not really interested in this condition so in fact, instead of uh, then saying, hey, condition five is not true, I can just change this to instead be, is our high of the candle less than the mid price? It's a lot cleaner, it's a lot simpler. Uh, and for our short side setup, we can repeat the same thing and say, is our low greater than the mid price? Now, as long as both of these conditions are true, we know that there's still an opportunity for the reversion to the mean. So let's add that in. So I'll say, and condition five here, and condition six for our short side setup. Now let's go ahead and see what happens to this particular arrow right here. Once I click apply, you'll notice that arrow disappears. This red arrow continues to remain plotting since it still has a reversion to the mean opportunity left. Now once I click OK, apply, this now gives us what should be a final starting point indicator for this particular reversal strategy. This is on a one minute time frame. Let's see what happens if we change this instead to a daily time frame, for example. You'll notice we still have the sell side arrows, the uh, buy side arrows plotting as well. So this indicator works on any time frame, uses the Bollinger Bands for that particular time frame, uses the conditions that we've coded in to then give you these buy side arrows. Whenever price action is outside of the Bollinger Bands, closes above the previous candle, suggesting any kind of, say in this case, buying strength, now on the opposite side, any sign of selling strength anytime price action closes uh, below the previous candle's low. All right, I hope you found this very simple Thinkorswim ThinkScript tutorial to be a helpful start with learning how to build your own trading strategies. We took the Bollinger Bands Reversal Trading Strategy, a very popular strategy which really relies on a reversion to the mean. We broke that out into lower bands, upper bands, dissected the Bollinger Bands indicator into each of its components, and then used those components to create different variables in which we're interacting price with the Bollinger Band uh, upper and lower bands to try and find opportunities where our rule set is met. Again, this is a starting point, so you can now start to layer on other indicators, other tools, other setups, other strategies, or even just use this as a simple learning lesson with regards to how you reference Bollinger Bands using code and how to build a very simple indicator using just a few pieces of logic. If you'd like to download the final version of this code, you can do so using the link in the description box below. I hope you found this uh, indicator tutorial to be useful in creating some of these bullish and bearish signals, which oftentimes will lead to some nice reversals and some nice reversions to the mean. Take care, everyone. Good luck trading, and I'll see you in the next update.